All right, so let's talk about the wave properties. Uh, I know you can see the amplitude, the wavelength, the frequency, the period. Now we're not going to restrict ourselves to these. We have to understand in detail, beginning from what a wave is. So what exactly is a wave? So you can think of a wave as uh, a repeating disturbance, okay? In that it affects where, wherever it's passing, right? So we could define our wave to be a repeating okay implying that it does repeat so it's a repeating disturbance okay so this repeating disturbance travels okay so it's a repeating disturbance that travels where does it travel so it travels through matter okay that would imply solid liquid and gas through matter or even space actually so space okay so does it only travel no it actually does transfer so add trans transferring energy as it moves so a wave is a repeating disturbance that travels through matter or space while transferring energy okay so a few things that you can actually think of as a repeating disturbance or as a wave would be sound so our sound is moving actually you see that there's actually that repeating disturbance as it travels through air for example okay so think of sound you can think of uh, water when you actually throw a stone at um, a pond you can actually see that there will be waves that will form okay the other thing that you can think of you can think of vibrations okay when you drop a metal you see that continuous vibration that's also a wave in its own form okay so let's look at now the properties of a wave as it moves so this kind of a wave we call this kind of a wave to be a transverse wave okay so not all waves are going to be drawn as the one above most of the times we like drawing because transverse are easily understood okay and easily able to define the properties well if you had to represent vibrations vibrations would be something that would come out like this so you find that at some points they are so concentrated or so close and then at some other points there are some spaces okay so that's an example of a longitudinal wave okay so waves can be longitudinal or transverse so now we'll look at the transverse wave to help us define the different properties of the wave that we have to know now one thing that you can know is consider this line to be the neutral point right in the x-axis okay so when a wave is actually moving traveling this top part we call it a crescent and then the down part the lower one we call it, we call them the troughs so these are troughs then the ones on top we call them the crescents okay that's one thing that you can actually observe there so a crescent is actually just the highest point okay and the trough is the lowest point okay now getting to the wave properties I've added the y-axis to help us understand everything that I'm going to actually explain here okay so if you go back to this diagram that I've actually given you you can see that I was trying to indicate certain things that would give you an idea right um, a frequency is just a number period is time the wavelength is actually a distance so even the units will actually match up. The amplitude is actually also the distance. Now, except it's in the y-axis. Now, let's actually get to define them. Okay. So when you talk about the amplitude of a wave, what do you exact? What are you referring to? So the amplitude is actually the maximum distance. Okay. So the maximum distance a wave reaches. from its rest position so let's take that to be the rest position okay so the maximum distance a wave reaches so even without adding the other part you know whatever you've mentioned is enough right so that's the maximum distance a wave reach, reaches now you have to know that if you're looking at the diagram like this just know that that's referring to the y-axis so that highest point there okay distance from this rest point that maximum point okay 
that's what we call the amplitude okay this is actually even useful when you are dealing with trigonometry it's actually very important that you understand that the amplitude is the maximum point and so if you've got for example the equation y is equal to 2 sine of x you understand that this 2 is the amplitude it's going to be the maximum point of that wave as you draw it okay so that's one thing that we know so we've noted that the amplitude is the maximum distance a wave reaches from its rest position okay now the other property that may actually interest you is uh, the wavelength what's what exactly is the wavelength what do we refer to as the wavelength okay so wavelength can be measured in two ways before even go get to the de definition it can be measured as uh, remember I've told you about the crescents so the distance between two crescents or the distance between two troughs okay two consecutive crescents to consecutive troughs or you can actually measure from oh, the resting position there up to the other point there you can actually also see that that's actually called the wavelength as well okay so the wavelength is actually the distance except in the x-axis and then you're measuring the distance between the troughs or the crescents or the two rest positions skipping one because you want to ensure that in a wavelength you should have a crescent and a trough if you're measuring from the rest position so a wavelength is a distance okay between the same spot okay on two sections of the wave that's complicated so let's go by the definition so wavelength is the distance between two crescents or two troughs simple right so we know that the wavelength is a distance you know the amplitude is a distance the amplitude is dealing with a y-axis the wavelength is dealing with the x-axis now the other common wave property um, that you actually come across is uh, the aspect of the frequency okay so what's the frequency so the frequency the, frequ the word frequency comes from the word frequent so it's how frequent the wave is okay so that's actually what the frequency is so it can be measured by how many crescents or how many troughs that pass a location in a certain amount of time okay so how many crescents or how many troughs pass in a position in a particular in a given time so you're looking at it you're trying to measure the frequency in terms of time how many crescents do we have how many troughs do we have passing through a spot in a given time okay that's what the frequency is okay and then other things that you'd actually want to note about wave properties is um, let me actually try to erase this and try to ask you a few questions to see if you've understood okay so if I'm to draw a wave like this so this wave has got a high frequency okay compared to a wave that I would draw like this okay because of the number of crescents within a short period of time within a same space right okay so now the key thing that you need to notice is a wave with a larger frequency has actually more energy okay that's one thing that you have to note and then a wave's energy again is also proportional to the square of this amplitude okay so the energy of the wave is also proportional to the square of its amplitude that's one thing that you can also take note so that implies there are the energy or the other amplitude there are the energy as well now the formulas that you might actually take note of is this one where our v is denoting our frequency so the frequency is actually inversely proportional to the wavelength as you might not okay the other frequency the lower the wavelength and vice versa so using the constant of speed of light you can actually come across this equation where we say the frequency using letter v is actually speed of light over the wavelength so the wavelength since it's a distance can be measured in nanometers or just meters or in actually measure of distance speed of light is 3 by 10 to the power 8 
in meters per second. Frequency is measured in A's. Okay. Or which actually means one per second, right? So this equation is very important and very useful when you are studying this this topic. The other common equation is where the speed, where V is not in the speed of velocity of a wave, where we say the speed is actually a frequency multiplied by should be the wavelength. Yeah, that equation is also very useful when it comes to this topic. Now they, um, they might also ask you to determine what we call the wave number. So the wave number um, actually is the number of wavelengths within a distance, right? So if you're going to say one over the wavelength, how many wavelengths do we have within the space or within that unit? That's what a wave number is. And one most important thing that I've almost forgotten is the period. Okay, period. So denote it by capital letter T. Uh, this is also time. So the time it actually takes for a wave to complete one full cycle is what is known as the period. The time it takes for a wave to complete one full cycle. So that may be something like this. The time it will take for this to be completed, that's a period. Um, I like thinking of it as uh, the time it actually takes to kind of like complete a wavelength. Um, so in other terms, this would be like the time it's taken to complete this uh, one full cycle. Um, it can also be measured like if you had to measure two, 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 two troughs, for example, or two cressets in this case. The time it would take from this crescent to the other crescent there, the time it's taking. Remember, the wavelength is the distance. Now, the time it would take for that to complete is what we're calling the period. And this is actually very useful as well. So you notice that the formula of the period can be given as 1 over the frequency. Okay, And uh, the other formulas that we've talked about in summary under this topic, briefly, or most use, used ones, the wave number is 1 over the wavelength. And then we said the frequency is actually direct inverse proportion to the wavelength using the speed of light as a constant. OK, very, very useful. And then, of course, maybe you want to know the formula of the energy, Prang's constant multiplied by the speed of light over the wavelength. OK, that formula can vary. It can also be using this property that we are seeing here, we can actually change it. It can become the product of Planck's constant and the frequency. Remember this V is not velocity. In a case where we think of speed, speed can be given as a product of the wavelength and the frequency. Okay, so this is a, this, this is a good start, a good introduction to uh, wave properties and I hope this video was useful. If you found this video useful to you, give us a comment. Okay, have a lovely day.